Jesus compared the final days before his second coming to that of the days of Noah. What were the days of Noah's like? What were some of the things that were happening in those days? And what lessons could we learn from the days of Noah that we might apply in our time today, right before the second coming of Jesus Christ? Please stay tuned. In Matthew 24, verses 37 to 39, the Bible says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The biblical account of the days of Noah begins in Genesis chapter 6. Approximately 1600 years had passed since the creation of Adam and Eve. The world was yet in its infancy. But the situation has gotten so bad that the Bible had said, And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made men on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. However, it was said of a man by the name of Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, 8, and 9, And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. And Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Noah was a man of faith. Just as Noah did exist back then, there are many modern days Noah who are still walking with God faithfully. So now, what are some lessons we could learn from the days of Noah in comparison to what is happening in our times today, right before the second coming of Jesus Christ? Let's get to it. Lesson number one. The sons of God had intermarried with the daughters of men and gave birth to a rebellious race. Let's read from the Bible in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and that daughters were born to them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. What was happening here was the intermingling of both those who were believers and unbelievers. The sons of God represent the children of Seth, which was of the lineage of the righteous. But the daughters of men really were the daughters of Cain, which was of the lineage of the unrighteous. So what you had was a mixing of believers and unbelievers. This created a serious problem. In verse 4, the Bible went on to say this. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came in the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, they were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. It is good to know that this mixing of the line of the believers with the unbelievers gave birth to what the Bible called the mighty men, the men of renown. But in essence, these mighty men were actually rebellious against God. Not only did they rebel against the law of God and the authority of God, but they were men of renown. The word renown here means men of character, men of great understanding and knowledge and wisdom. In essence, these people were very well advanced mentally, intellectually, even technologically as well. For, for this reason, they had confidence in what they were and who they were and the things that they were able to achieve and build for themselves. Therefore, they did not feel the need to believe in God. The same is true today. We live in a generation where many are losing their desire for God. Only a very few even recognize the authority of God, for the vast majority lives in a way as if God does not even exist. 
just as it was in the days of Noah. It is because of this reason that God warns us as Bible-believing Christians to be very careful how we intermingle with the world. We are told in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Let us now go to lesson number two. In the days of Noah, the people were living in sin, they were totally depraved, and yet they were unconcerned about their spiritual condition before God. Let's read what the Bible says in verses 11 and 12. The earth was also corrupted before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their ways on the earth. In Luke chapter 17, verse 27, the Bible says, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. It is good to note that there is nothing wrong with eating and drinking or getting married. What was really going on back then, the people who lived in the days of Noah, they were really unconcerned about their spiritual condition. Neither did they even regard the very presence of God. They were also unconcerned and oblivious of the judgment that was to come. So they were living in sin, but they had no realization of the consequences of sin. This was the issue that was going on back then. These people were comfortable in their sins while the flood was about to come. You see, the same is true today. We live in a generation where sin and sinners are praised, and the righteous are despised. When you do wrong or you come up with some new habit or some new style or you pervade some level of wickedness in a different way today, the generation applaud these type of actions. But when you try to do right, when you try to serve God or when you try to live up to his law, very few recognize you. You see, these things were happening in the days of Noah and they are also happening today. The wise men in the book of Ecclesiastes had this to say. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Feel God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. For God shall bring every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let us move on now to lesson number three from the days of Noah. God had given them 120 years of probation to repent and onboard the ark. God is such a merciful God. Although he did not like the way the people in the days of Noah were living, God made a way for them to escape. Before God bring judgment, God made sure that Noah built an ark for anyone who was willing to onboard the ark and believe the message that was sent to them. Not only so, God gave them 120 years of probation to return and to repent from their sins and to do the will of God. This is what the Bible says. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with men forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. For 120 years, Noah preached the message on board the ark, come, turn away from sin, and listen to the voice of God. The sad reality is, very few heeded the message. Today, we are living in the closing hours of probation. Soon and very soon, the door of mercy is about to be shot. Only those of us who have taken heed to the message of salvation that is found in Jesus Christ, only those of us who have accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ are going to be saved and be kept, not just from a great deluge, but from the fire of destruction that is to come. In Revelation 22 verses 11 and 12, the Bible says, 
He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his work shall be. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptation, and to preserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. According to the Bible, a time is going to come when every decision will be sealed, either for eternity or damnation. Today, we are living in a time of the close of probation. What that means is that we are living in a very few hours of the end of earth history. And what that says to you and I, whatever we have to do, we must do it quickly. Friends, there is no time to wait. It is now time to come to Jesus and humbly accept the gift of salvation before the door of mercy is forever closed. If you hear this message today, do not wait any longer. Come to Jesus just as you are, in repentance and faith, in a desire to do His will. Come. Lesson number four. The majority did not believe, but instead, they made fun of the message and the messenger. We are told in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Think about that. Noah was the eighth person. This goes to show that Noah must have been the last individual to, um, to onboard the ark. So, seven of his family went inside of the ark being the eighth person also tells us noah was preaching the message until the very end however they did not get in could you imagine what some of the excuses were back then for not entering into the ark of noah some probably were saying it's never rained before what kind of foolish idea is this come on noah you must be crazy you are going to build an ark on dry land? Come on, God is love. He will never destroy the world. Could you imagine the type of excuses that they come up with? All type of philosophical discussion or scientific interpretation or some historical application of what Noah was saying. There must have been a lot of reinterpretation of Noah's word or a lot of deciphering and probing of his thoughts and ideas. And the concept of believing in a message of a flood that was coming back then must have sound really foolish. But was Noah crazy? He was not. Because the flood did eventually come. In 2 Peter chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says this about our days. For the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, they shall turn away their ears from hearing the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. Just as it were in the days of Noah, so it is in our time today. Majority do not want to hear the hard truth of the gospel, the message of salvation, the message of repentance. And the sad truth is that many churches are not only compromising, but even improvising to the masses carnal desire. The message that you hear today is a message of peace and prosperity continually. Very few are preaching the message of repentance and salvation and obedience to the law of God. Noah preached the hard truth, and we must also preach the hard truth, even if the majority do not accept it. In Matthew 7 verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. 
The truth is, my dear friends, very few individuals will accept the gospel and be saved. The majority are gonna go in a broad way and they are going to be lost. Let us find ourselves among the few who are walking and trusting in the word of God. Lesson number five. The flood came at a time when the least expected it. In Matthew 24, 39 and 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Here is the next few words and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The people that were living in the days of Noah did not even believe that the flood was going to come. It's been said in the Bible that after Noah entered into the ark, seven days later it began to rain. So I could only imagine the first seven days while Noah was inside of the ark, they must have said, you know what? We knew that this man was a con. We knew that Noah was crazy. There was nothing to worry about. But we are told that on the seventh day, it began to rain. The flood came and they knew not. You see, in these final days, the second coming of Jesus Christ is going to take maturity by surprise. While many may be living their life and setting goals and going about their lives with the absence of God in their minds, Jesus will show up while many or not on their guard. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in that which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the lead elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. My dear friend, here's a final question. How do I get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? What must I do to prepare for the times that lie ahead of us? How do I prepare myself, also my family, for the crisis ahead? Listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doeth come. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Men. The way we get ready, the Bible says we must watch and pray. Watch your character, watch the sign, watch Jesus, and at the same time, spend quality time in prayer, in repentance, asking God for faith and courage to make it in these final days. As a final appeal, will you comment on the description box below? Say this, Lord, help me to get ready. Help me to stay ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember what Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. So let's get ready. All right, if you enjoyed today's video, I'm gonna ask you to like and subscribe to the YouTube page. Click the bell icon so you can receive future notifi notification as I upload every other uh, Wednesday. Okay, friends, I'm so glad you were willing to watch this video. Once again, my name is Pastor James Devalon. This is Look and Live, and do not forget, look unto Jesus and live by faith. Have a good one. God bless you.